Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for Eco Coral Reef. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules of the game as it's being played, and I will be showing a full three-player game today. Now, before we go into it, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you like seeing videos like this one and you'd like to support the channel for the future, then please go to patreon.com slash Games. There's a bunch of perks that come along with supporting this channel, including getting access to exclusive opinion episodes that I film about the games that I'm playing, as well as being able to vote on some of the videos that are filmed each month and being able to access some videos early and advertisement free. Now, again, you can go to patreon.com slash Games to learn about that and I would really appreciate it. All right, on that note, I think let's now jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles because I might make mistakes as I'm showing the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below the video in the top comment. One other thing I'd like to mention is that this game does not come with these colored cubes. I'm simply using those to better differentiate between the players for this video. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. Thematically, each player is a marine biologist who has been hired to provide assistance in planning out an ecological coral reef for the conservation of marine life. As the game goes on, players are going to be taking picture tiles as well as mission tiles into their area, and then they can place these picture tiles out into a growing communal grid of tiles. As we place these tiles, we're going to try to line up the various coral in the corner because that will get us points. And if we have situations where we can actually complete all of the same type of live coral in a corner, that will give even more points. Now, another thing players are trying to do is complete various missions that they can take into their area. These missions dictate not only patterns, but also sets of different types of fish that will be seen out here. And for each mission you complete, you'll get seven victory points. As players get points, they will reach moments where they can take these gems, and these can be worth a point at the end of the game, or you could discard them to get extra possibilities for tiles that you can take during your turn. We are going to keep playing the game until at least one player has reached the threshold points for this player count, and then we finish the round, and then whoever has the most points at the end of the game will be the winner. That being said, you do lose two points for every mission you haven't completed, so you have to make sure to take the missions that you think you will complete before the game is over, because obviously completing them is great at seven points, but having them left over at the end is not what you want. Now, I'll describe how all of this works in detail while we're playing, and on that note, I think it's time to start the game. For today's tutorial, we are going to play as the red player, and we have the starting player token, which means we can now take the first turn of the game. Now, on each player's turn, they can take up to three actions, although for the first player in the game, they actually get a bonus action of four. So that means we will take four actions, and then for the rest of the game, every player will take three on their turn. Now, for each action, we can either draw a tile into our hand, or we could play a tile from our hand down here onto the table. I do want to point out that all tiles are always face up, so everyone can see what everyone has. We started the game with these two picture tiles right here, and for an action, we can draw a new picture tile from this market, or we could draw one of these mission tiles. And when we take tiles, we could also go random from the top of the deck. So we can start taking actions, and for the first one, I think let's draw this tile here. Now, at the start of each one of our turns, we will refresh these markets so that there are three face-up picture tiles and two face-up mission tiles, but we only refresh this at the beginning of the next player's turn, so we won't see another one for the moment. Now, we also have a hand size of up to five picture tiles and up to five of these mission tiles, and at this point, we obviously have three. So that's completed one action, and for the next action, I think let's take this mission tile. This one in particular has to do with tiles that have two animals on them, and on that note, I'd actually like to focus in a little bit more and talk about these tiles. As you can see, they have these animals on them, and each tile is going to have one, two, three, four, or five animals on them. Now, for the two, three, four, and five, you actually have the same exact animal pictures for each of that type. For example, this has two animals, and that has two animals, which is why they look the same. Likewise, the green player has these two, which have four animals, and they show the same graphic, which also matches this tile with that four animal graphic. Now, there are tiles with a single animal on them, and each of these actually has different illustrations. Obviously, we have this shark here in our hand, and the game started with this octopus in the middle of the table. Well, at this point, we've taken two actions, and remember, we normally get three on a turn, but since we're the starting player, we get a fourth action for this first turn. Now, I think for our third action, let's play this out onto the board. Now, when we place these picture tiles out, we can rotate them as much as we want, and then we have to place them so that they are matching one edge with any previously placed tile. In this case, I think we would like to place it like that, because after placing tiles down, we're going to score points if we match up the live coral in the different corners. Now, there are four different colors of live coral. 
and there is also dead coral, as well as this wild joker coral. Now, whenever you place a tile down, you can then check each of the corners that match up with another tile, and if the colors match, you get one point for each of those. So in this case, we will get one point because this pink matches, and another point because this brown matches. And I do want to point out that if you match dead coral up with dead coral, that also counts as a match, so that would get one point. I'd also like to point out that there are these wild joker corners that do not score you a point when they are placed next to dead coral, but they do score you a point when placed next to live coral like this right here. So by placing this like that, we will gain two points, and we can track those right over here with these little turtle point tokens. At this point, we've taken three actions, and for our final action, I think let's just take this tile. It has a couple of joker sides, and it has two of the dead coral sides, and I think this is going to get us some opportunities to score points. Alright, at this point we've finished all of our actions, so play can move clockwise over to the green player. Now they get to take three actions, and for the rest of the game, everybody is going to take up to three actions on their turn. At the start of their turn, we can see that we do not have three picture tiles or two of these mission tiles, so we have to draw tiles from the top of these decks until each of those conditions are satisfied. After considering their options, green is going to start by taking this, so that is going to be one of their actions. Then for their second action, they are going to place it down just like that. As you can see, they have made two matches, so that's going to get them two points, which will bring them up to two. And then for their third and final action, they're going to place this tile just like that. The first thing they have to check is the matches on the corners. As you can see, they don't match here or there, but they do match here. And as long as you match at least one, that will be one point. So they don't get an extra point for the fact that this matches on each side. So in this case, they are getting one point. But then after placing a tile, if you ever fully complete a piece of coral where every single piece is the same color, you will get three extra points. So that means in this case, they are getting one point for the match and then three points for the completed pink coral. And that means overall, the green player just scored four points. They were at two, so that's going to bring them up to six. All right, their turn is done, so now the yellow player can go, and we do have to refill the display. After thinking through their options, they've decided to start by placing this tile over here. As you can see, this is just making one match, so that's going to get them one point, which will bring them to one. And then for their second action, they're going to take this mission. After that, for their third and final action, they're going to place this tile down. And they've decided to put it like this. Let's focus in. And as you can see, this tile has two of the Joker corners touching this green and blue. And the Joker always matches with something else. So that means they will get two points for that, which will bring them up to three. Now, at this point, it might look like yellow is done with their turn because they've completed all of their actions, but they're not actually done because they do have this mission. Now, on a player's turn, they can take a free action to complete a mission as long as the requirements are met, and in this case, yellow is going to do that. Now, there are actually three different ways that you can score every one of these mission tiles, but before we talk about those, there is an overarching requirement where you must have just placed a tile down that is then used for the mission that you are completing. This means you are never allowed to take a mission and then complete it based off of the tile situation that was already out here on the board. You must add to the situation, then use at least one of those tiles for the mission. Now let's talk about actually completing these missions. And once again, there are three ways to do that. The first of these is called colonization, and the way this works is you have to have this exact pattern of tiles out here in the middle, and every single tile on that pattern has to have this number of animals on it. Now, obviously, in this case, we can see there are four tiles in a row, but we have a four, a one, a two, and a three, so obviously they don't have four in a row that each have three of these animals. Now, I do want to point out that these solitary single animal tiles are wild, so that means they can count as any of the other types. Now, that seems great, but for every one of these solitary animals within the mission that you score, you're going to lose three victory points. Now, on that note, let's talk about the second way that you can score these tiles, because obviously yellow isn't going to be colonizing. And that second way is called migration. The way this works is you ignore the pattern, but you do take a look at this type. Now, the way migration works is you have to have four tiles out here in the grid that make up a rectangle, and all of those need to have this number of fish in them. Now, what this means is each of those four tiles have to be in the corners of a rectangle shape, and importantly, each of those tiles cannot be directly adjacent to each other. Now, as you can see out here, there's no way to make a triangle shape with each of the tiles not touching each other. So that means yellow is also not migrating, but what they are going to do is the third and final way mission cards can be completed, which is called coexistence. Now the way this works is you must match this pattern, and then every tile in that pattern has to have a different number of animals on it. 
As you can see, there is a line of four tiles in a row, and there are four, one, two, and three animals on each of them. So that means all of these are different. So that means yellow can now successfully complete this using coexistence. Now they have used a solitary animal on it, so that means they are going to lose three points, but every time you complete a mission, you are going to gain seven. So that means they get seven points minus three for this. So overall, they can complete this, gaining four points for themselves. They were at three, so that's going to bring them up to seven. And then all completed mission tiles are going to be placed over here out of play. Now, it's important to note that when you complete it via colonization or migration, you're going to put the tile face down. But if you complete it using coexistence, you instead leave it face up. The reason for this is because for each of the five different tile orientations, coexistence can only be scored once. That means this is the only time players can score coexistence for the four tiles in a straight line objective, and that's why this is face up to remind everybody that if they get another one of these missions with four tiles in a row, they must complete it via migration or via colonization because somebody has already done it using coexistence. Now, once again, colonization means you match the pattern as well as all of the tiles being the same type. And remember, migration is having all of the tiles be the same type, and those tiles are in the corners of a rectangle out there on the board. So it looks like yellow is now done completing this mission. And in fact, their turn is over. So we can go, but the first thing that happens is we have to reveal another mission tile. And I do want to point out that while there are five different patterns, there is also one of each animal size type for each of those patterns. So this right here is the same pattern. One of them is for the two animals, and one of them is for the four. All right, we can now take our turn. So let's focus in, and one thing we are considering is that we'd like to complete this mission. Now, this has two animals on it, and there's a two animal here. So we could potentially put this over there and get a match. And then we have two out of the four that we're looking for. Another thing that we could try to do is go for coexistence. That has each of the tiles in this pattern being different amounts of animals. And we can see out here, unfortunately, there is this pattern forming, but both of these spots already have four animals on them, so they cannot be different. Now, of course, we could go for this pattern up here for being different, but what we have in our hand right now is a four, a two, and a one. And there's already a two and a four in that pattern if we're going for the coexistence difference. Now, of course, we do have this solitary animal, but losing three out of the seven points for a mission by using one of those doesn't feel too amazing. So I think what we're going to do on our turn is place this over here. That way we could potentially work towards the colonization with this pattern. And of course, that doesn't break the possibility of going for coexistence with the pattern up there if we're able to get some different numbers of animals. Now, we can see over here that we've matched it once, so that's going to get us one point, which will bring us up to three. And then after that, I think we should complete this brown coral. We can do that with a joker, but if you do this, you only get one point instead of three. I would still get the plus one point for matching, so overall that would be two points, or as this would be four points. And I like the idea of having more points, so let's go for it. Now we can see that we are not going to match on either of these spots, unfortunately, but again, we get one match here, plus three for the fully color matching coral. So let's take four points, which is going to bring us up to seven. After that, we have one action left, and I think let's just take this tile. It's a five, so we could potentially use this to try and work towards a coexistence pattern over here that would be one different number, and maybe one of these solitaries will be out, and it'll make sense to take that to complete it, but we'll just have to see what we're thinking on our next turn. Either way, we have now completed our three actions, so now the green player can go, but first we of course have to refresh the market. Now the first thing they've decided to do is take this two animal tile. After that, they're going to take this two animal mission that has four of these tiles in a diagonal. Then for their third and final move, they're going to put this down like that. And they can then score it. This is going to be a match because you have the green going to the joker, so that's one point. Then there is the blue going to the joker, so that's a point, so they have two points total. And then this is a completed set of the same coral type. However, there is a joker in there, which means instead of getting three more points, they get one. So that means overall they're getting three points for this tile placement, which brings them from six up to nine. All right, that's finished the green player's turn, so now the yellow player can go, and it looks like we have to draw another picture tile and mission tile. After considering their options, yellow has decided they are going to take this tile, and then that one, and then for their third action, they're going to place this down like that. As you can see, there is a dead coral match, so that's one point. Then this joker matches for another, and then that joker also matches for another. There's no extra bonus points over here, of course, because there is blue as well as green in this completed coral, and you can only have one of those if you'd like to score a coral that's all the same color.
That being said, yellow does still get 1, 2, 3 points for matching, which means they're going to go from 7 all the way up to 10. Now, as soon as a player meets or exceeds 10 or 20 points, they will then take a gem of their color and they can place it in front of them. Now, at the end of the game, these are worth one point if you still have them, but also during your turn as a free action, you can discard one gem in order to immediately draw two more picture tiles and put them face up into the display, or two more mission tiles that then go face up in the display. That means you could use these gems to actually exceed the display amount from the standard three up to something greater. This also means if somebody spends one of these to bring some more out, it's possible you won't have to refill it at the start of the next player's turn, because again, you only do that if there are less than three picture tiles, and over here if you have less than two mission tiles. For the moment, yellow can keep this gem in front of them, and they will only use it if they think it makes sense. Of course, holding on to these until the end of the game for that extra point is certainly something to consider. Well, yellow is done with their turn, which means we can go, and we do have to draw two more of these picture tiles. So, we can now take our turn. Now, I have to say that I'm a bit bummed that there is not a two animal tile out here. The reason for that is because this right here, in order to be colonized, needs that pattern with the two animals. And there's two here, two there, as well as a solitary animal, which acts as a wild, which does reduce the mission score by three, but still, that's not that big of a deal. So if we could put a two-value animal right here, that would get us seven minus three or four points, which would still be pretty great. Unfortunately, that is not the case, and we could take this solitary turtle and place it over there, but then we would get 7 minus 3 minus 3, or just one point. And again, you do lose two victory points at the end of the game for every mission that you still have, so that might still be worth it if the game was closer to being over, but I don't think that's what we're going to reach for right now. Instead, I think let's get another mission, and in particular, we'll take this one here. That shows the four animals on it and that set of four diagonal tiles. And the reason we're doing that is because now we can take this tile here and place it onto this spot. And I think we would rotate it like that. After doing that, you'll notice there are three of these tiles in a diagonal line that have four animals on each. So we need just one more, either there or over there, in order to complete this and colonize it. Now we do get some points for matching over here. Each of these are jokers, so that matches here getting us one point, and that matches over there getting us another. So that's two points, which brings us up to nine. At this point, we have one more action left, and I think let's take this tile here. It is a four animal tile, so we have set ourselves up to potentially work towards placing over here or maybe over there on our next turn in order to complete this. And of course, our opponents can also see that we are working towards that. Either way, that is going to finish our turn. So now we can get ready for the green player's turn by dealing out another picture tile as well as another mission. Now, before we actually continue with the green player's turn, I think it's time to talk about how the game's going to end. With that in mind, we can focus over here on the score track, because as you can see, once we reach the 34 mark, it shows a flag with four sea turtles. That means if this is a four-player game, and anybody got 34 or more points, then that player finishes their turn, and then everyone else will continue to take turns until we reach the player who took the first turn of the game. After that, the game will be over, and this does mean that if the player to the right of the first player was the one to cross this line, then the game would end immediately after their turn. Now, if you look farther up the track, you can see the end game threshold for a three player game is going to be 37 points. And finally, if you're playing a two player game, the threshold is here at 40. Once the game is over, we can do final scoring, and this is quite simple. Players gain one point for every gem they still have in front of them, and they lose two victory points for every mission they still have. After players modify their scores, the player with the most victory points will be the winner. Well, on that note, let's now rejoin the game, and the green player can now take their turn. After considering their options, green is going to do a setup turn. They are going to draw each of these two four animal tiles, and then for their third action, they're going to draw this four animal mission that also has that pattern on it. Remember, you can hold up to five of these animal tiles as well as five missions in front of you, so they are just gearing up for the future. Now that's going to finish a pretty simple turn for them, which means the yellow player can go. And of course, we do have to draw some new tiles. For Yellow's first action, they're actually going to draw a blind from the top of the deck, and they got another three animal tile. And with that in mind, they've actually decided to take this mission, which is a three animal mission, and it also has that particular layout of the tiles. After that, for their third action, they're going to take another tile, so just like green, they spent their whole turn drawing tiles up so that they can be more flexible for the future. So that's going to finish another quick turn. Yellow is done, which means we can go. We do have to see a new mission, and then one more picture tile. 
Now, unlike our opponents, I think on our turn, we're going to be placing some tiles. Although for the first action, let's actually draw this one. After that, we have two more actions to go, and let's place this immediately just like that. As you can see, that has matched up twice, so we'll get two points. And this will bring us up to 11, and it will also get us access to this gem. After that, we have one action left, and I think it's time for us to complete this mission. Now, we'd like to complete it with colonization, which means we are going to match this pattern, as well as have all of the tiles in that pattern match this number of animals. We can see there's four here, four there, and four there, so we just need a four on this spot or that, and we've set it up by putting this tile here to then place a tile over there. In this case, we can take this one that we already have, and when we put it right here, you'll notice we do have a double match again. This is the main reason I decided to grab that one from the supply, because I thought we'd get a little more points out of it. So we can gain two points right now, which will bring us up to 13. And then, of course, as a free action, we can play this mission. Remember, these can be played for coexistence. If you have the pattern matched with uh, different types of animals on all of them, you could go colonization, which is what we're doing, where the pattern is out here on the board, and it's all the same matching number of animals as is on the tile. And lastly, you can do migration, which has four tiles that match this number of animals in a rectangle, forming a grid where none of the tiles touch each other. In this case, we went for colonization because of the pattern and number match. So we can complete this, flip it over, and then gain seven points because we did not use any solitary animals which would cause us a penalty. So this was a great turn for us. We go from 13 all the way up to 20 and just like that we actually gained both of our gems over the course of this turn. This also means that we are slightly over halfway towards the end game trigger which is certainly making the green player sweat a bit considering they still have two missions that they'd like to complete. Well green can now go and we do get to draw one more tile for them at the start. For their first action, they're going to place this tile right over there. As you can see, that's matched twice with the blue and the brown. So green will get two points, bringing them to 11, and that will get them their first gem. Next up, they're going to place this tile down, and they'll put it right over there. As you can see, they've matched once with the blue, but not with the other corners. But they've also completed a full blue live coral, so that is three more points. So overall, that is four points for placing this tile which will bring them from 11 up to 15. At this point, Green has used two out of their three actions, and for their third action, they're going to place again, and this time they'll place their last picture tile right over there. When we focus in, this one had a bunch of jokers around it. Each of these is going to match so they get two more points, which will bring them up to 17. And then finally, for a free action, they're going to complete one of these missions, and in particular, they're going to complete this one. This is going to be a full colonization because they match the pattern, and every tile on that has four animals on it. In particular, if we look over here, this is the pattern. So that means they will get to the full seven points because they did not use any solitary animals for this mission. Since this was colonization, they can put it face down up here, and then when they get 7 points, that is going to bring them all the way up to 24, and just like us, they got both of their gems on the same turn. Overall, I suppose that's not too surprising considering Green had spent their last turn just drawing tiles so that they could build up to a mega turn like that to get a whole bunch of points. Well, Green is now done, so now the yellow player can take their turn, and we don't need to bring out any new tiles because the green player didn't take any. So it's now time for yellow to take their turn. After considering their options, they're going to start by taking this picture tile, so they now have four, and then they are also going to take this mission. So they are really doubling down, even though it looks like a couple of us are over halfway towards the end of the game, they've decided to get some more resources. Now they do have one action left, and they've decided to place this tile just like that. As you can see, they've matched twice, so that's two points. And then this is a complete, fully pink live coral, so that is three more points. So overall, that's five points for just placing this tile down. That's quite a bit, considering you get seven points for completing missions, and so far we've been doing a lot of focus trying to make those happen. Either way, yellow can now take their five points, and that's going to bring them up to 15. Now before we move on, I do want to point out that Yellow could complete one of their missions right now. Specifically, that is their three animal mission, and they could do it with the migration style with the pattern that I have showing on screen. As you can see, in each of the corners of that rectangle, there is a three animal tile, although in one of those corners there is a solitary animal. So if they scored this, they would get seven minus three for that solitary animal, giving them only four points. And because of that, they've decided to save this mission for the future, where they're hoping to get the full seven points for it. All right, yellow is done, so now we can go, and we do need to reveal another mission tile as well as another picture. 
Now, at the moment, we have this five animal tile, and we do have this mission that we've had for essentially the whole game. I was really hoping to be able to try and match this for colonization, but honestly, it's the same number of points if we finish this for coexistence, where we match the pattern, but have every tile have a different number of animals on it. Realistically, I think I've been over-focused on trying to make colonization happen. In fact, I think this turn we can actually finish this using coexistence. Now, we are going to need to take a tile, and with that in mind, let's grab this four-animal tile here. Now, we have two actions left, and I think we should place both of these tiles down, and we are going to complete this, but unfortunately, we'll have to use a solitary animal, so we will get four points instead of seven, but I still like the idea of cashing this in and not having to worry about it anymore as we work towards the later parts of the game. Now, we do have to place these out, and in particular, we want to place them over here. That way we can have this pattern with a 1, a 3, a 4, as well as a 5 animal. So they're all different, which is why the coexistence will work. Now we should place these out in such a way as to give us the most points. So we should probably do this. And then we can do that. Now this is pretty good considering that's two matches there and two matches there. So that's four points. But we have also set up two different spots where a live coral could be completed relatively easily to give our opponents a bunch of points. That is certainly something we have to consider. Do we want to give easy points to our opponents as we are also getting points by matching these things up? Hmm. Actually, this brings up an interesting point. This does set our opponents up quite a bit, and it does complete this, but part of me feels like maybe we should not actually worry about completing this on this turn. We could try to complete it later, because by doing this, we will actually complete this ourselves. It also continues to let us get close to being able to finish this in the future by getting another tile, so I think let's actually stall on that mission, and let's place these two tiles out. Now we can start by placing this one here, which is going to match twice, getting us two points. And then we'll put this one there, which will match once, but it will also complete this, getting us three more points. So that's two points for the first tile and four points for the second. So by putting these two out, we got six points right there. That'll bring us from 20 up to 26. And overall, that was a great turn, although we do still have this mission, which could potentially be a liability, because if we have it at the end of the game, it will cost us two points. Now, I think we still should have some opportunities to try and complete this, and either way, that is going to complete our turn. This means green can go, and we do have to draw another picture tile. Now, the first thing green has decided to do is actually spend one of their gems. When they do this, they can draw two more mission tiles or two more picture tiles, and they've decided to draw two more of these picture tiles. This means they have five tiles to choose from, but of course they did give up one victory point to do that. Well, green hasn't actually performed any actions yet, but they now have a bunch of options, and for their first action, they are going to draw this. This is indeed what they were hoping to see. It's been a while since we've seen a two animal come out, so they thought odds were pretty good if they spent that token that one would appear. After that, for their second action, they'll just take this. That's got a couple of jokers on it, which seems nice and flexible. And then for their third action, they'll place this two animal tile down, and in particular, they'll put it right over there. Now, that's only going to match once, so they get one point, which brings them up to 25. But then they will also be able to complete this mission. This is colonization, because as you can see, they have matched that pattern, and all of the tiles have the same number of animals as this. So they can flip this over, and they'll get the full seven points for it. So far in this game, nobody has actually scored for migration, which is the four corners having the same animals that match that tile, but it looks like players have been getting a lot of points doing other things. Now green can take those seven points, and that will bring them from 25 all the way up to 32, which is starting to get precariously close to the end game trigger of 37 for a three-player game. Well, green is done with their turn, so now yellow can go, and we don't have to bring out any new tiles because it looks like each market is currently full. Well, the first thing Yellow wants to do is play one of their many tiles, and that's going to be this one. They've decided they would like to put it just like this. And as you can see, that's going to match twice, which gets them two points. This means they'll go up to 17. And then for a free action, they're going to cash this mission in, and they'll finish it with Coexistence. The pattern is going to be right here, and remember Coexistence says that all of the tiles need to have different numbers of animals on them. Here there is a 3, a 2, a 4, and a 5, so that is going to be 7 points, and they don't have to lose any points because they did not use any solitary animals. This will take them from 17 up to 24, they will also get their second gem, and then this can be placed face up over here to remind everybody that no one else can perform a coexistence mission using that tile pattern. At this point, Yellow's just used one out of their three actions, and for the next one, they are going to draw this tile that has five animals on it. 
After that, for their last action of the turn, they're going to place this tile, and they'll put it just like this. That is going to match with the green once, and then the brown once, so they get two points. So they go up to 26, and they are tied with us. Well, yellow is done, so we can go, and we do have to draw another tile onto the market. Now I think this is finally a good time for us to complete this. Uh, over here we were going to do the coexistence, having different ones over here. There is a 1, a 3, and a 5, so if we put a 2 or a 4 there we'd be fine. We currently don't have any pictures, but there is a 4 over here on the market. So I think that's what we should do. Let's spend one action taking this tile, then we can spend another action placing it over here. And I think let's specifically not do this, because that would open up a rather easy way to get a bunch of points for one of our opponents. So instead, let's rotate it like this, which is actually, I think, better, considering that's going to get us one point for matching green and another point for matching pink. Although, huh, that does open this up for being easy points for our opponents as well. I guess if we don't want our opponents to get easy points, we'd have to do something like this, which means we would also not get any points right now. Honestly, considering how tight the victory point track is at the moment, I think this is going to be the best call for us. Sure, we would get two points if we did that, but then the green player would be able to somewhat easily get four points for doing this, which means they would net more points on us than we would be getting by placing this tile. And the green player is only five points away from ending the game, and if they do that, then we wouldn't even get another turn. So I think we will do this. That will score us no points for the tile placement but then we can complete this mission using coexistence. Once again, there is a 1, a 3, a 4, and a 5, and actually remember these solitary ones count as any animal set that we wanted. So effectively, this is, I guess, counting as a 2. Now this means we will get 7 points, but we will subtract 3 points because we did use one solitary animal. So we can place this up here face up because we used coexistence, and then when we get our 4 points, that will bring us all the way up to 30. Unfortunately, we are still behind the green player, and we've taken one more turn than them, so they are in a better position than us, but hopefully we've not set themselves up to win the game on their next turn, so that we can maybe try to claw our way into the lead. Now, at this point, we've actually only taken two out of our three actions, and I don't think we want to take another mission. Let's take one of these tiles instead, I think. And this one seems like it's got a variety of options, so we'll go with that. Now, our turn is done, so green can go. We have to reveal a couple more tiles on the market. After considering their options for their first action, they are going to take a mission, and then for their second action, they'll draw this tile from the market. After that, they have one more action, and with it, they will place this tile down right over there. By doing that, they have matched twice with these Joker Corals, so that is two points, which means they jump up to 34. And then as a free action, they can also complete this mission they just took. As you can see, there are five fish here, there, there, and there is a solitary animal right there, which counts as any set of animals. So they have completed this with colonization because they matched the number of animals and the pattern, but they are going to lose three points because of that solitary animal. Either way, that's still going to get them four points which is going to bring them from 34 up to 38, and they have indeed crossed over the 37-point threshold for triggering the end of a three-player game. Now, as I mentioned before, this means the triggering player is going to finish their turn, and then we will keep taking turns until everyone has had the same number of turns, which means we will go until the player to the right of the starting player will take their turn. Now, green is done with their turn, so the yellow player can go, and this is going to be the final turn of the game. We strategically put this tile down to not get as many points as we could have, hoping to extend the game another turn, but it looks like the green player was still able to get enough points to reach that end game trigger. Now, before yellow goes, we do need to see another tile. And for yellow's first action, they are going to take this tile, and for their second action, they'll place it down. As you can see, that is going to match twice, so they'll get two points, which will bring them up to 28. At this point, yellow has one more action, and with it, they are going to place this down right over here. Now, that has matched up once with a joker coral to get one point, but then this one over here is dead coral, so that's not going to get anything for them. But they'll still take that one point, which will bring them to 29. And then as a free action, they will complete their final mission, and this is going to be a migration completion. This is the first time we've actually seen this in the game, and remember the way this works is you need to have four tiles that match the number of animals here, and they have to make up the corners of a rectangle. In this case, we can see there are five animals here, there, there, and there, so that makes up the overall rectangle, which means they can score this and they'll get the full seven points because they did not use any solitary animals. So they can add 7 points to the 29 they had, which does bring them up to 26. 
and now the game is over because we've continued playing until everyone took the same number of turns and at least one person crossed the threshold. Now, at this point, we can do final scoring. Everyone will lose two points for every uncomplete mission they have, but it looks like we were all able to successfully get them complete. We completed a whole bunch of them throughout the course of this game. Now, lastly, we will each get one point for every gem that we have. Yellow is going to gain two points. We will gain two points as well, and the green player will gain one point because they did spend one of their gems, so that'll push green up to 39, and those are going to be our final scores. Green wins with 39, yellow is right behind at 38, and unfortunately we are a decent way back at 32, and that's going to complete one full three-player game of Eco Coral Reef. That's also going to bring this tutorial to a close because I've now covered all of the rules to the game. Now, if while you're playing the game, you noticed any particular turn where maybe we should have done something differently, or if some part of the game really jumps out to you, then please comment down below because I'd love to see that kind of feedback, and I hope you enjoyed learning how to play this game. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.